Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for everything you've done for us. And thank you for, for clothes on our back. And thank you for putting food on our plate. And thank you for shoes on our feet. And thank you for our brain to think. And thank you for everything you've done for us. And thank you for our family and everything else. Amen. <laughs>
Amen.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I know y'all can be better than that. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Today we have a skit for you guys for the New Salem Youth Rise Up. All right. In this poem, the author Maya Angelou reveals how she overcame her struggles through self esteem. She describes how you should let nothing get you down, and how you can rise to any circumstance and not let anything stand in your way, especially your skin color, age, religion, and background.
It's prayer time. It's prayer time, church. Those of you who desire prayer, you may stand on your feet. Those of you that desire special prayer, you may come to the altar this time. Those that desire prayer, stand on your feet. And those that desire special prayer, you may come to the altar this time.
praises, Lord God. I have no reason to be sad, Lord God. And Lord, I just, Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for the 69 years that you gave him, Lord God. Lord, I just thank you. And I lift your name on high, Lord God. But Lord, we just ask that you go into the hospitals right now. Lord, let your will be done. Lord, touch him, Lord God. Lord, we just thank you, Lord. We ask that you go into the nursing homes, Lord God. Lord, just touch them right now. Lord, those individuals that are working uh, with them, Lord God, I just pray that you give them compassion, Lord God, and touch them and give them strength. Lord, I lift up all caregivers around our land, Lord God. Lord, I just thank you, Lord God. And we can't do anything without you, Lord. God, we need you for everything and all things. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, I just ask that you touch every child right now in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Lord, they are getting ready to go back to school on next week. But Lord, I know you are already there, Lord. You are already there for us, Lord. You are already there for the children. You are already there for us, Lord God, the staff. Lord, we're going to need you this coming school year, Lord God. We don't know what we up against, Lord God. But Lord, we're going to put our trust in you. God, your word said to trust in the Lord with all your heart, Lord God. So God, I'm going to trust in you. I'm going to acknowledge you, Lord God. Lord, I thank you right now. But Lord, I just ask that you touch every baby right now, Lord God. Touch it right now, Lord. Help them to go back to school with a better attitude, Lord God. Help them to respect the staff, Lord God. Anybody that's working with them, Lord God. Lord, touch their hearts, Lord God, and let them continue, Lord, to let their light shine in school, at home, Lord, wherever they go, Lord God, help them to let their light shine for you, Lord God, and Lord, I just thank you right now, Lord God, Lord, we pray for a great school year, Lord, I am claiming a great school year, Lord God, Lord, we thank you, we give you all of the glory, Lord, I ask that you touch our pastor, and first lady right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you touch they, all of their needs on today, Lord God. And this following week, Lord God, I pray for all my all my church family, Lord. I pray your blessings upon them, Lord God. Lord, whatever they're dealing with, Lord God, I know you got them, Lord God. Let them continue to put their trust in you, Lord God. Lord, I don't know anything else. I know my God got me. I know my God got me. You have never failed me. You have never left me and you never will. So Lord, let us continue to put our trust in the master, Lord, in your word, Lord. Help us continue, Lord God, to keep you in our hearts, Lord God, that we won't sin against you, Lord God. Help us to be better, Lord God. Better disciples, God. Just help us to do better in everything we do. Everything Lord, help us to, Lord, get you, uh, that you get the glory out of it, Lord God. Lord, let your will be done on today. Let your will be done on this week. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.
everyone. They kind of practiced on this yesterday. This is something new that we're starting here because we're trying to get more out of the scene of praise dancing and learning something different because there's many different ways that you can praise God. So that we're going to attempt to, they're going to attempt to do this step show today. We all work together and put it together. So, you know, as y'all see them come up more and more towards the end of the year and beginning and doing different things, you guys are going to see this morning. And if you know someone that teaches this kind of stuff, please holler at me and let me know because y'all are really trying to do different things with them. And it really takes a village. Not just one person, not just two or three. It takes a village. So if y'all know anybody that has special talents or anything that don't mind coming in to help our children, please just holler at me and let me know. I don't mind calling them. I don't mind picking nobody up. I just want to try to help get the youth going on the right track because y'all, they need us. They, they really do need us. And I would rather have them in here, doing it in here, than somewhere else. So let's give them a hand as they try to come and do this step show for you guys. Let's give them a hand.
something for me before we get into the sermon. Can y'all give y'all pastor, Pastor Smith, a hand right quick? Boy, y'all can do that. Now. Give him a hand. Come on, come on. Give him a hand. Give him a hand. And while y'all giving him a hand, can y'all give his other half a hand as well? First lady Smith. Y'all lift her up. Give her a hand. They are jewels in this Mid-South community. They pray for us. They spiritually guide us. They are vessels here, and they allow their light to shine, and we are grateful for what they're doing in this community. Can y'all give our young people a hand? Y'all give them a hand. Give them a hand. And to that young lady that just sung the uh, solo before I got up to preach, y'all give her a hand. Give her a hand. You keep going. Keep allowing the Lord to use you. 
You have a mighty anointing on your life. Listen, there's a word from the Lord today. It comes from John, the Gospel of John, third chapter. The Gospel of John, third chapter. We'll start at verse 14 and we'll end at verse 19. As you're getting your devices to John, please hear this word of prayer. God, thank you for everything that you're doing in this place. God, thank you for helping New Salem's youth to rise up. God, as they get ready to go into the school year, I ask that you protect them. I ask that you guide them. God, let no weapon formed against them be able to prosper. God, keep them as they're in their different classes and touch their teachers and the administration at the schools. God, now we need a word from you. God, hide me behind the cross. God, speak for me and speak through me. And God, get all the glory out of this place, out of this sermon, Lord. I love you. It's in Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. Gospel of John, verse 14. If you have it, say, I have it. If you don't have it, say, hold up, preacher. Chapter 3, starting at verse 14. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version, so it sounds different. But it's saying the same thing as your King James. Um, verse 14 reads this way. And just as Moses, everybody say Moses. Moses. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but may have everlasting life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in the world that it might be saved. Everybody say saved. saved. Through him. Those who believed in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe, everybody say do not believe, right. are condemned and already because they have not believed in the name of the Son of God. Yeah. And this judgment that the light has come into the world and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. My brothers and sisters, I would like to use as a subject today for your consideration, confront. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Confront. confront. That's the wrong neighbor. They stuck up to Diddy and Bougie. Look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. are you willing to confront him? You may be seated. Are you willing really to confront? When you confront, when you confront something, it means that you need it, right? You need it. Um, I want to tell y'all what happened to me three weeks ago. I was in Indiana um, with a bunch of preachers getting ready to serve the Lord, and uh, I was confronted with a peculiar issue. The issue was that the people who were hosting us, pastor, um, they prepared a meal that looked nasty. The, the meal, it didn't look good at all. Have y'all ever been in that position where someone invites you in and they are being gracious hosts and they prepare a meal for you and that food just doesn't look right? Y'all, there was about 15 preachers with me and, you know, preachers, we love to eat. And so we got upset, Pastor, when we looked at that meal. And it didn't look right. Now, the host was not afraid of us. 
Because he didn't care where we came from or who we thought we were. He said to us, hey, I spent a lot of money trying to prepare this meal for you guys. And y'all won't eat the food. He confronted us. Pastor, it was interesting to see these preachers from different walks of life. Some pastors of mega churches, some Kojic bishops and well-known preachers that you might see on TV. And he's telling them, and me, little old me from Memphis, uh, y'all are wrong for not eating the food that I prepared for y'all. He confronted us, and it was interesting, y'all. I sat back in my seat and I laughed as I watched him confront these people of great status and stature. He brought them to his level and told them, what you're doing is wrong in this particular space. He confronted them. He wasn't afraid to confront them. He stood right there and told them, you're wrong. Now, my brothers and sisters, as I was listening to him, I sat up in my seat and I began to watch the room and I, I saw those creatures get nervous and I saw them begin to scratch themselves and some of them even picked up their handkerchief and began to wipe their mouth. They were nervous because they're not used to anybody telling them what to do besides God. And so as we were all being confronted in that room, I began to think about God yeah. and I realized some very powerful truths about my God that every day God confronts me. Every day. Go ahead. Man, I, I don't want y'all to make me preach hard, but every morning, the Lord wakes me up and confronts me. I wish I had about two or three witnesses in New Salem that could say every day, the Lord confronts you and he touches you with a finger of divine love. Is there anybody here that can say he confronted me this morning? He confronted me with grace. He confronted me with mercy. Here's what it is. He confronts me with exactly what I need to make it in life. Here's what he confronts me with. Every morning he confronts me with breath. And because he confronts me with breath, my posture is praise. Is there anybody here that can say that the Lord confronts you? And because the Lord confronts you, it causes you to be thankful. God confronts me with life, and so therefore I am thankful. Everybody say, I am confronted. confronted. I'm confronted, I'm confronted. I think that's what's happening in the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John, which is not a synoptic gospel, it is different than Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And so it is different. It is one that is peculiar. It starts off not talking about the genealogy, which means who Jesus' mother and daddy was, but it talks about the spiritual aspect of Jesus being with God. Have y'all ever read John the Gospel before? When it opens up, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word came flesh and dwelt amongst us. The Gospel of John pushes Jesus with us and confronts us in our humanity and shows that the great I Am can come and live with us. The Gospel of John paints this picture of Jesus being baptized by his big cousin by the name of John the Baptist and a dove coming down and sitting on Jesus' shoulders and saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. The Gospel of John shows that Jesus is the Christ. The anointed one, the one who was born to save the world, the one who is God in flesh. The gospel of John shows us what God will do when God meets humanity. And that is change everything. The gospel of John, have you ever read it before? The gospel of John is a powerful gospel because it shows us that Jesus is the truth. Now in chapter 3, something peculiar happens. Jesus is showing that he is the truth. He's showing that he is the way, the light, and he is the salt of the earth. And when this happens, it makes the religious people uncomfortable. Yeah. Isn't that what happens? Yeah. Jesus does something for somebody, and church folks get agitated. Yeah. I wish I had some help up in New Salem. Yeah. And so what happens is, is that there is a man who noticed what Jesus does. His name is Nicodemus. Nicodemus comes to Jesus and he comes to him by night because he doesn't want his homeboys to know that he's talking to the one who's coming to change the entire world. 
And so he comes to Jesus and he has a conversation with Jesus and he says, what must I do to be saved? And Jesus says, you must be born again. You got to be born again. And so then Jesus begins to explain to Nicodemus this idea of being born again. And what we discover is that Nicodemus has a smart, sarcastic mouth. He says, I can't enter my mother's womb again. No, Jesus is not talking about going back into your mother's womb, but he's talking about placing your mind on heavenly things. And in the middle of that conversation, we don't know, Pastor commentaries and scholars have suggested that it was Jesus that was speaking in the King James and words are read at this particular point but some scholars say we really don't know who's speaking but somebody begins to confront our reality with who God is yeah. and when they confront our reality with who God is we find out that God here it is God is someone who confronts us by meeting us with his character it's right there in the text. His character is a God that heals us. His character is a God that loves us. His character is a God that gives us the light. Let me say it one more time. Maybe I'm talking too fast for you. God's character is the character of a God who heals us. God's character is the character of a God who loves us. God's character is a God who gives us the light. I'm right there in the text. In verse 14, the Bible says that Jesus or the speaker is telling us that just like Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, the son of man must be lifted up. Now that shows that God is a healer. I know, I know some of y'all are wondering, what are you talking about? The serpent being lifted up in the wilderness, a snake being lifted up in the wilderness. Well, you go back and read Numbers 21 at the service today, and you realize that the people in the Old Testament were falling sick, and the prophet Moses lifted up a bronze staff and a snake wrapped around it, and when the people looked at it, they were healed. Yeah. Have you ever wondered why when you look at the side of a medical vehicle, they have the staff and the snake around it? It is a symbol to show that healing is possible. And so what happened was, was that the great I am went through the object and gave healing power through the staff to show the people that God can take anything and bless you. And so the staff was lifted up because the people need to know that God can heal. And so what Jesus says in Gospel of John chapter 3 verse 14 that the staff was lifted up but now the son of man who is Jesus will be lifted up. And because Jesus is lifted up, guess what? We gonna be healed. Yeah. I, wish, I wish I had about three folks in here that can say he's healed my body before. He, he, he's healed my body. I've had blood pressure problems, pain problems, diabetes, I've had cancer, I've had low self-esteem, but guess what? He's a healer. Is there anybody can say he's a healer? Not only, Pastor, does he heal us physically, but he heals us spiritually. Can I tell y'all my testimony? I was sinking deep in sin, but the Lord came and gave me Jesus and healed me. He's a healer. Yes, he is. Have you ever tried him? Have y'all ever tried him before? Have you ever tried him to heal your situations? Won't he do it? Wait, I know that it ain't politically correct or economically correct or grammatically correct, but won't he do it? Ain't he all right? He heals. He heals. Watch this. He heals, which means that God healed in the Old Testament. The serpent was lifted up in the wilderness. God healed in the Old Testament, and God heals in the New Testament. He's going to lift up Jesus. Guess what? And he's healing right now. I am testimony that he's healing right now. I survived. I don't know about y'all, but I survived an entire pandemic, and I'm still here. Because my God, my God can heal. So the character of God is that God is a healer, and then here it is, God is a lover. For God so loved the world. I wish I 
I have some help up in here. For God so loved the world that he gave. Wait, for God so loved the world that he gave. For God so loved the world. Wait, did God only love white people? Did God only love black people? Did God only love preachers? Did God only love gangsters? Did God only love men? Did God only love women? No, for God so loved the world. Which means it does not matter what your economic status is. It does not matter what your social background is. If you are a human, guess what? You're covered in God's love. For God so loved the world. Pastor, I realized something. I looked at my bank account the other day and I realized that I couldn't even pay God for what God has given me. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, God. Yeah, I, I want to be real shot. I looked at my checkings account, I looked at my savings, I even looked at my little investment account, and I realized that that, that rough uh that rough account I got, that savings account I got, that little checking account I got, it cannot pay me. God for the love. That God has given me. Y'all, I only got a couple of dollars and a little pot to pee. I only, I only got a little bit. I only got a little bit. But guess what? It don't matter. God still loves me. Okay, maybe y'all ballers are big shot callers in this church. Uh, I don't got much to my name. My name is not in lights, That's right. but God loves me. Yeah. Okay, let me, let me say it this way. I don't always live right. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I know scriptures, I can quote them, I know the hymns, I can sing them, but I don't always do that. Yeah. Y'all like Reverend Nelson, so I can keep it real with y'all, right? Yeah. Uh, Listen, sometimes folks push me too close to the edge. And, and, and sometimes, sometimes I lay my little religion down. I don't, I don't dot every I and cross every T. Always keep his commandments, but he still, he still loves me. Yes, he does. He still loves me. Here, here, here's what's interesting: For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Can I tell y'all, God loved, and it did not require our human action. Ha. The issue that many of us have with God is that we want to control God. We think that God is some spiritual puppet that we can pull on when we want blessings. But the truth is, is that God is sovereign. And so God moves however God wants to move. For God so loved the world. That he gave. Who did he give us? It's only the God and Son. Okay, now I want y'all to know he heals. That's the character. God heals. God loves, here it is, and God gives us light. Uh, I want y'all to know that the, the interesting part about this particular text is that most people stop at verse 16 because that's the part that get back to folks real excited. Because we are excited about everlasting life. And we should be excited about everlasting life. But the text keeps going. And the text talks about the possibility of us becoming the light because of what we believe. Now, here is my question to you. What are you? Are you the darkness? Or are you the light? I grew up in a little church over there in Orange Mound or Spotswood in Boston, Greater Hope Baptist Church, and those older saints told me that this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Oh! The interesting thing is, is that there are so many Christians who are walking around in darkness that they are forgetting that they are called to be the light. Yeah. 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 Yep, me, Holy Ghost. 
Can I tell y'all? Can I tell you? And we can move on. We can move on. Uh, God created everything with the power of his voice. But everything is sustained by God. But one of the key things, if you go back and read Genesis, that he created was the light. Because plants can't grow in the light. Humans can't function without the light. You can't make it without. Y'all want to know why our world is falling apart? Because too many of us are not busy being the light. We're too busy being gossiping, messy, low down. Touch yourself and say, I am the light. I'm the light, I'm the light. Uh, let, let, let me let y'all go. Let me let y'all go. I, I'm, I'm up here fussing. Let me let y'all go. Uh, listen, we have to confront who God is. God is sovereign. The character of God is what God wants it to be. We cannot control it. Sovereignty means God moves how God wants to move, and God is not controlled by us. So God's character is that God heals, God loves, and God provides life. Here it is, and God also creates new possibilities. Yeah. We can go home. Go back to verse 16. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I want to suggest that through the character of Jesus and the reality of Jesus of Christ, that God created a new possibility. Can I, can I walk down the reality for you? He created Adam. But Adam didn't give us a new possibility. He created Abraham. Abraham gave us blessings, but he didn't give us new possibility. He created Moses. And Moses was a stuttering murderer who liberated the people that were in oppression, but he didn't give us new possibility. He gave us Ruth, Naomi, and Esther. And those were some bad sisters, but they didn't give us a new possibility. He gave us David. Yeah. He's low down, home on himself. Yeah. Go ahead, man. But he didn't give us a new pot. He created even David's son, who had so many wives that he couldn't even keep himself in his pants, and he went and got some side chicks on. He created Daniel. He created Isaiah. He created Jeremiah. He created Ezekiel and Amos and Jose. He created Obadiah. He created Nehemiah. And guess what? None of them gave us new possibility. He even created Malachi. And Malachi didn't give us new possibilities. But there was a boy who came from a ghetto girl found in Jerusalem who didn't even have enough money to pay for the end when she was having contraction pains. And he was born in a manger. And he was born in the ghettos of Bethlehem. He grew up in the hood of Jerusalem. He walked around healing the sick and raising the dead. He turned water into Cabasia. He walked on water. He calmed the stones with his voice. He's my company keeper. He's my way out of nowhere. He's my bridge of the trouble water. He's my lily in the valley. He's my bright and morning star. Do you know him? Do you know the man? His name is Jesus. And can I tell you the new possibility that he created for me? For me, I can't speak for y'all, but for me, he marched up a hill called Calvary. And it was there. It was there at the cross. Well, I first and burdens. Anybody had burdens The burdens of my heart. They rolled away. It was there. My faith. I received my sight. What did he do? He died for me. Yes, he did. He died for me. Did he die for you? Did he die for you? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? But that's not how the story is. He created a new possibility. Early. Early. Sunday morning. Before the Duke could sit on the grass. Early. Sunday morning. Before the rooster. 
These children here working, they showing they're willing to work. They can work. They can pray. They can pray. They can sing. So we need to let them. Because if we don't let them, the world will. Amen. We need to hold what we got. Keep involved. Mary. 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 It don't make no sense. It don't make no sense. I don't want to send Sister Judith looking for you next month. Are y'all with me? We need to hold these young people in this church. Let them know that we appreciate them. Amen. There's something that we need to do. Amen. I don't want to have to wait till next year to get all this good stuff. Let me just say this. I'm going to take it to my seat. I done wrote over everything. Reverend Schrader had me write in my Sunday school book this morning. First Sunday message. Next Sunday will be dedicated to her. Man. <laughs> Come here. Reverend Dowdy. When I met you, you didn't have all this. You got bold and stronger. Wrote all over the bulletin. Second Sunday sermon will be dedicated to him. Amen. For you stay in the word, God will give you some more word. But you got to be in the word to get some word. Amen. God bless you all. I'm just, I am just delighted. Uh, I just don't know what to say. Amen. I'm just so happy. I'm so thankful for all these young people. Young people, stand up. Wherever you are. And let's give them a round of applause. On the third Sunday next month. Amen. Amen. We all behave all year. We got something special planned for you next year. Amen. God bless your heart. Just, just they say, keep, keep doing what you're doing. Amen. 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 It'll pay off after a while. Sister Judy, yes, come on and give us a vote of thanks. Get these baskets and throw them out over the back. Y'all confront somebody this week.
appreciate you for coming out and worshiping with us today. We appreciate those who have helped in this endure. We thank you, Reverend Schrader, for our Sunday school lesson and our mustard seed. If you weren't here for Sunday school, you missed the tree. And you also missed an opportunity to get a seed, to get a seed to plant. And you know, things come from seeds. And the Bible tells us that uh, all we need is the faith of a mustard seed. We saw a mustard seed this morning, y'all. We couldn't hardly see it. Amen. Then we want to thank Pastor Grammar Downey for that great word. Reminding us that God is a healer. God is a lover. And he's a giver. We thank him for that. We thank our pastor for giving us this opportunity. We thank our musicians for working with us on Saturday. We thank Sister Mildred, Sister Mary, Sister Judy for coming out and working with us. We thank Sister Darlene for our food. Y'all we just got so much to be thankful for. So if you have, um, and we thank our parents. Thank our parents. So what's that one for? They got are they labeled? Yeah. Everybody got their tickets? So how we gonna know
Mildred, Sister Carla, Sister Patrice, Miss Ashton back there, everybody that came up here for two months straight in the road to help us get this program together. Sister Darlene, thank you again in the kitchen ministry. Appreciate you. Sister Cooper, can't thank you enough, dear. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sister Smith. Oh, yes, Vacation Bible School, y'all. I didn't forget. I might not have mentioned it yet last week because I was downstairs, but y'all, we had a ball in Vacation Bible School. We're going to get you to bigger, much, much bigger and better things going forward, but y'all, we had a ball. Sister Smith, again, thank you so much for stepping in. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I'm learning. Okay, uh, if that's it, Sister Birthday. Birthday, oh, yes. What about you? her birthday today, Shirley. Would you stand, please? Y'all know Sister Hannah has been a member here for years. Yes. Years and, years yes. And, years. Yes. and she was coming until she got sick. Yes. And so we're asking anybody who can, please support the family. God bless your heart. We're also praying for the family of Felicia Jones. That is just my niece. The brother. I've known the prayer list for some time. He told me his daughter had an episode and she passed this last Friday and she has two young children and the newborn grandbaby. We're praying for that family. So we're keeping your prayers. We're getting ready to go home, but uh, I'm looking at this basket. It looked like it was a setup. <laughs> I see the cup. She always complained every time she took a cup down, that drink was in it. So she bought me a cup. They say my feet are real big, so I see some big slides in here. Then she complained about them always being rusty. So I see some body lotion in here. Body love. And in case I don't hold my feet, she got me some footage in here so you can't see the rust on them. Then if we come to church, I said, but it had my nose. I see some nose trimmers. I'm just kind of wondering. This basket was set up. Is this a setup, y'all? I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it if what if what let me know. Thank you. God bless your heart. Listen, New Salem, that is just no place like this. I and I've been to a lot of places. But if you know, you gotta probably do Salem, God bless your heart. Uh Reverend, you wanna come here to the benediction? God bless your heart, ready to go home. Thank you, wife. Again, thank you guys so much for having me again this year. Um, I pray that um, the word made sense and that it will go with you through the rest of the week. Uh, let's go home. Okay. Um, please bow for a moment of prayer. God, thank you for your word today. Thank you for what you did in this space. God, you saturated the sanctuary with your love, your power, your grace, and your mercy. God, as we go throughout the week, God, remind us to confront you with who you are. 
And when we look at who you are, we know that all things are possible. And so, God, we thank you again. We ask right now that you be with us as we go throughout the week. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, the one and only wise true God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And all the church says, Amen. 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 Look at somebody and tell them that you love them and ain't nothing they can do about it.